Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jim Thunder, and I'm the board chair of Reconciliation Thunder. And uh, today we have uh, a very special guest with us, Senator Kutcher, and uh, we're going to be talking about call to action number six. And uh, just by way of introduction, just have a few words I'd like to share. Uh, so S Senator Stan Kutcher is a Canadian senator and professor emeritus of psychiatry at Dalhousie University. And he was appointed to the Senate of Canada on December 12, 2018. Before his appointment, Dr. Kutcher was department head of psychiatry at Dalhousie University, as well as associate dean of international health where he held the Sun Life Financial Chair in Adolescent Mental Health. He's a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and a distinguished fellow of the Canadian Psychiatric Association. He was awarded the Order of Nova Scotia in 2014. Senator Kutcher is joining us today to talk about his advocacy related to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action number six, related to the repeal of seven of section 43 of the criminal code of canada so senator thank you so much for joining us today is there anything that uh you would like to add or, or tell us about yourself before we get started sure and thank you very much for that uh, very overly kind introduction jimmy uh, the one thing that i would like to add and ask is that you call me stan because then uh, <laughs> the, 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 i am a senator that's my title but my name is stan so 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 please feel free to to just use my my name Absolutely. Thanks so much. <laughs> and so, yeah, we want to welcome everybody. We can see your your comments, uh, you know, people joining us from Vancouver, Toronto. So as you continue to join the live stream, feel free to comment and let us know uh, who you are and where you're from. And uh, as we go later today, once we go through the presentation, we're going to have an opening for questions and answers for the senator. So we're looking forward to that. So feel free to uh, to get ready to ask those questions. Um, so today we are talking about section 43 of the Criminal Code of Canada and call to action six. So, so what is that? We have a short presentation here today uh, in which we are going to be talking about uh, answering some of those questions, just to give us some of a background about what we're talking about today. Um, so, and also for those who have registered online through the link we're going to have a zoom session afterwards so for those who want to have more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation feel free to uh to join us for that as well so the 94 calls to action so too many canadians know little or nothing about the deep historical roots of these conflicts this lack of knowledge has serious consequences for first nations inuit and metis peoples in canada so this is a direct quote from the truth and reconciliation commission of Canada's final report in 2015. And so this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the 94 calls to action. There are as many as 22 different sections of these 94 calls to action. So you can see that there's one for every segment of Canadian society. So we're zeroing in on call to action number six today. Call to action number six reads, we call upon the government of Canada to repeal section 43 of the criminal code of Canada. What's section 43? It's related to the correction of a child by force. So this is what it reads. Every school teacher, parent, or person standing in the place of a parent is justified in using force by way of correction toward a pupil or child, as the case may be, who is under his care if the force does not exceed what is reasonable under the circumstances. In the in 2004, the Supreme Court case, uh, Supreme Court of Canada, they narrowed the scope of Section 43, saying that force is only the following. First, toward children between the ages of 2 and 12, must be correcting a behavior at the time it is happening and cannot be done in anger. Uh, an object such as a ruler or belt cannot be used and the person cannot hit the child's head. And then it further defines unreasonable force. So that includes force that causes harm or might cause bodily harm. Force used because the person is angry, frustrated, have lost their temper or because they have an abusive personality. Use of force on a child under two years old or on a teenager. 
use of an object on a child, hitting a child on the head, doing anything degrading, inhumane, or harmful, use of force on children who have disabilities, which make it hard for them to learn, use of corporal punishment by a teacher. And uh, lastly, by way of background, we want to talk about a brief timeline since the release of the call to action. 2015, the federal government committed to repealing Section 43, though it was unclear at the time how that would happen. Bill S-206 was introduced, but ultimately it failed to pass through, through the Senate in 2018. In 2016, Indigenous Northern Affairs Minister Carolyn Bennett cautioned that there may need to be a viable alternative to changing the law that the government was, and that the government was consulting experts on the issue. In 2007, a group of faith leaders, scholars, and policymakers presented the federal government with a new Christian theology statement, which called on the government to act. They presented the statement to Senator Murray Sinclair, then Minister of Justice Jody Wilson-Raybould, and Crown Indigenous Relations Minister uh, of Northern Affairs Carolyn Bennett. Yeah, that question. So that is uh, that's a little bit by way of a, a background of what we're talking about when we're talking about Section 43. And uh, so we really just want to now jump into the conversation. Um, so, um, Stan, could you tell us a bit about the work you've done in relation to call to action number six? And uh, as well, tell us about uh, Bill S-251 and uh, Bill C-273. Sure, and thank you very much for that, Jimmy. Uh, I'll start with the last part of that. Uh, bill C-273 is a similar bill introduced in the House of Commons, but we don't know when that bill will even come forward or if it will come forward. Um, and so uh, we at the same time introduced uh, S-251, uh, coincidentally, not, not as, a, as a plan. Uh, and we were we are already in second reading now, and our, our our intent is to try to move this legislation through as quickly as possible uh, through the Senate, uh, have uh, speeches on second reading, and try to get it to committee, uh, uh, and then move out of committee and back to the Senate for third reading, and uh, and pass. We hope that it will pass the Senate, and then it can go to the House and, and be dealt with there. So that's the process that the bill moves. Uh, it, it's been a real privilege for me to take this on from Senator Murray Sinclair, uh, which was, uh, he was spearheading this attempt. And you're so right, Jimmy, this, this, this bill or facsimile thereof has been around since actually before the TRC calls to action. It has been around since I think the late 1980s. And this is the 18th time, the 18th time that uh, this type of bill has been before parliament. And as my uh, team says, 18th time lucky. Uh, because uh, the, the window, I think, now is open, that it wasn't open as wide before. I think people really have a better understanding of the impact of residential schools uh, on, on Indigenous peoples and on all Canadian society and our responsibility to deal with that effectively. I think people have a much better understanding of, uh, of the, the TRC calls to action. Um, and, and there has been, as you know, a commitment from, from the prime minister and other uh, party leaders to, to, to bring all, all these uh, calls to action into play. Uh, we also uh, have now recently in the last uh, year and a half put UNDRIP, uh, United States and Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People into Canadian law. Uh, so that that gives us another framework for, for, for moving this legislation forward. We've had good research since uh, 2015 showing the impact of corporal punishment, even mild, what's called, some people call mild. I don't know why they call that, so like, like whacking a kid. Um, uh, it, it actually causes uh, harm to, to, to young people, and there's absolutely no substantive evidence that I am aware of or that our researchers can find to show that that, that corporal punishment of children is helpful to them. Uh, so all these different uh, kinds of, um, uh, of, of movements forward have given us uh, the courage and enthusiasm to bring this bill back. And we're, we're doing it uh, with, with tremendous humility because it's supportive. I see our role as supporting the, the TRC recommendation number six. So we're championing it, but we're supporting it. And we want to make this happen. And our task now is to try to encourage civil society 
to let parliamentarians know how important it is that this section of the criminal code be, be repealed. So, so in Canada, the criminal code defines assault by hit, hitting or threatening unwantedly to an, anybody. And so what this actually does is it, it protects some people from assaulting others. And that's just not right. And I, I, I have given this example. For, um, if your 92-year-old mother who is suffering from dementia and is unable to understand the, the, the issue of traffic and cars runs into the street, you run out, you pick her up, you grab her, and you bring her back safely on the sidewalk. And you say, oh, mom, thank you. You know, here you are. You're safe. You know, great. And you've had to pick her up and put her on the sidewalk. If you're five or six year old child runs out on the street because they don't understand the issue of traffic. You run out, you pick them up, grab them and bring them back and you put them into safety. And that should be it. If you hit your child after that, that's assault. <laughs> There's no reason to hit your child. You wouldn't hit your grand your mother, <laughs> would you? But the law as it currently stands allows a parent to hit the child after they have protected them, but it won't allow you to hit your mother. So we want equal rights under the law. Children have rights, parents and teachers have responsibilities. And we know that parents want to do the right thing for their kids. You know, I'm a parent, I'm also a grandparent. I want my kids and my grandkids to grow up to be the best that they can be. Teachers, we've spoken to hundreds of teachers. They also want to do the right thing for their students. And, and, and we know that hitting people isn't the right thing. So this, I think this is just one little step forward and we're doing the best we can to be helpful. So it's one step, but we, we really need your help. We need everybody's help in Canada to make this a reality. Awesome, yeah, and you, and you touched on my second question here. How many times has the legislation tried and failed? You said 18 times. Well, times. this this is the 18th, so 17 times it's tried <laughs> and it's failed 17 times. My goodness gracious, yeah, right. And you're feeling that so so this this could be the time that it actually passes. You talked about uh, you know UNDRIP that has been uh, passed into law. You talked about the increased awareness of the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission's 94 calls to action. So you're feeling that this could be the time where it could actually pass. Well, Jimmy, not only could it be, I think it has to be. I think hmm. that we have we have played around with this so long, and uh, I, I, f I find it frustrating. Look, look, my background is as an expert in the mental health of children and youth, and, and uh, in that professional expertise, I see no value in corporal punishment, and that's a, my professional opinion. So. Uh, I think that we as a society have come to the point where now we're realizing that this doesn't really help kids and it, it can potentially harm some kids, not all kids, but it can potentially harm some. So why would we put children in a position where the intervention that we give is not helpful and for some it might actually be harmful? I don't see the logic in that. I don't see the reason for that. And I, I don't see that it is a defensible position. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the joint statement on physical punishment of children and youth. So this joint statement, this is something that we sent out as part of our uh, 9494 campaign. We sent it out on our mailing list and also on social media as we were talking about this session. So can you talk, tell us a little bit, what is the joint statement on physical punishment of children and youth? Well, it's the organizations coming together to talk about exactly what we've been saying, <laughs> right? We, we want to do those things which help our children grow and develop the best way they can. We want them to flourish. And, and we don't need this kind of corporal punishment as a method of helping children flourish. And, and, and there are so many different organizations that have signed on to this and, and key individuals that have signed on to this. And, and, and it's still, you're going you're gonna to hear both the enthusiasm and the frustration in my voice as we're talking, because in spite of all this, in spite of these joint statements, in spite of the constant discussion about this, we haven't got this important piece of legislation over the goal line yet. Uh, and so now's the time for us to, to move 
past this joint statement. The joint statement is a foundational piece, but we have to take that joint statement and use it and move past it. We have to get this legislation through our committees, through the Senate, and then through the House. And this is really, really hard work. And it's, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to be the vehicle for this work, but we need everybody in Canada, uh, your organization, every organization in this country who is committed to having children grow up to be the best that they can, who are committed to try to help our society improve how it raises its children uh, to work on this with us. We need your help. Awesome. Um, so one of the one of the um, final questions that I have before we uh, jump over into uh, the Q&A section of this here is uh, what can Canadians do to support action on call to action number six? So if you were to give us maybe top three, top five, uh, last session we got together and we were talking about putting reconciliation action plans together. And uh, for those who are watching who haven't seen it, I encourage you to go back and watch the video. Um, but so this is now some, some concrete rubber meets the road of specific actions you can take in relation to call to action number six. So uh, can you give us some, some concrete examples, you know, top three, top five, something to that effect? Oh, absolutely. And thank you for the opportunity to give, give some <laughs> suggestions. They don't, all, don't often have that opportunity. The, the, the first thing that I want to say that is that people have to be comfortable that what they're going to act in fits their, their own skin. So I, I'm going to make some suggestions, but these suggestions may not fit the skin of every single person or not fit the skin of every single organization. So that you need to do what you're comfortable doing. So that's the first thing. Uh, so I just want to recognize that and that you may have ideas that I'm not going to come up with that are better than the ideas that I come up with. So you should do those ideas. <laughs> so you should do those ideas. I think the, the, the key thing is that we need you to act. You know, talking is good, but it doesn't take us where we need to be. We need you to act. So the question is, acting in what ways? This is a political issue. We're in Parliament. Parliament is politics. This is a political issue. So the question is, how do you nudge this legislation in the political arena? So the, the, the first thing is, is as organizations to let government know that this is important to you and that you support its passing. And that means personal contact, not emails. Don't send emails. Personal contact, make a phone call, make a personal visit, so write a personal letter. Okay, not form letters, but personal letters saying why this is important. And focus on the ministers that have responsibility for this general area. So Minister Miller, Minister Haidu, Minister Bennett, Minister Lametti, and the Prime Minister. Those are, oh, and, and, and Minister Gould, because families and youth. Uh, Minister Ian, she has youth in her portfolio. So you've got about seven ministers. Um, and and it, it takes the time to reach out. But if you can reach out personally, that is so important. So that's one thing to do. Yeah. The second thing is we're, we've got the, the, the bill in the Senate. So reach out to every single senator because what we want to do is we want to pass this bill with as large a majority of votes as we can in the Senate. So engage with every single senator just the same way that I have suggested with engaging with members of parliament and engaging with ministers. Phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, written letters, not form letters, no emails, just that very personal thing. Tell your stories. When I spoke in the chamber at second reading, I mentioned about some of the challenges that I had as a child and the discipline that I faced. And my intent from that, never to use that kind of discipline with my children. And when I watch how my children have grown and developed and how they parent, they're way better parents than I was. <laughs> so I, I think one of the things that I was able to 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 pass on to 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 my children, and probably most of this was from my wife, because she's a better parent than I am, um, was that 
our children are better parents than we are. And we, we want that. We want to see that, you know, I, I can't fault my parents for parenting the way they did. Cause that's what they, that's how they learned. That's, that's the, what they were parented as, but we, you know, I can change that and, and, and make the parenting better for my kids. And then I'm seeing them being better parents than I was for my grandkids. And, and I guess my grandkids will be better parents for their kids. I'll never live to see my great, great kids, but you know, I, I'm hopeful for that. So, 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 you know, it, it gives me a, you know, a, a nice positive feeling that if there's anything that we can leave as a legacy for the next generation is to help them be better parents because the better the parenting, the better the kids and, and so on and so forth. So, so this is such an important thing for all of us. So, 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 so speak to all the senators, reach out to the senators, uh, every single one of them. And then the third thing I, I would, I, I would say is reach out to educators because educators, some of the opposition to this has come from educators, not from individual ed educators, but groups of educators. So reach out to the teachers' federations, the principals' federations, let them know about this. There, there are alternative ways that they can be protected if they're trying to uh, use physical means to protect some, a child or, or, or to protect themselves. Uh, there are common law protections. There are uh, other jurisdictional and legal protections. I don't think they really need this protection in, in the criminal code. They, I think some of them think they do, but I don't think they really do. So reach out and talk to them and, and, re, and, and help, help them understand uh, because most of the teachers that we have spoken with, in fact, pretty well all the teachers we've spoken with really don't want to use corporal punishments in their classrooms. And then, and then the fourth thing that I would say is that um, <laughs> the, um, the young people have to speak. And, and if your organizations uh, have uh, groups of young people, uh, I would ask that you give those young people voice whether they speak as individuals or as groups of young people, uh, their voice matters. It really, really matters. If young people are saying to the senators, if young people are saying to the members of parliament and to the ministers, we don't want to be parented like this. We don't want to have teachers have disability. We, we, we understand that the corporal punishment doesn't help us grow to be better kids and better people. It may be okay for some because it won't hurt them, but there are others that it will really, really hurt. And we can't tell in advance who's going to be really hurt and who's not going to be really hurt. So why would you do it for anybody? Because it doesn't do any good anyway. So, but so we need the young people to have their voice. You know, there are millions of young people in this country. If 10% of those young people were to reach out to senators and parliamentarians and say, we want to get rid of this. We, we want this bill to stand. That will be a huge, huge impact because those young people are, are going to be voters in the future. And, and, and if their voice is coming now and they're going to be voters in the future, people will listen to them. They may not listen so much to me, <laughs> but they, they will listen to them. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That's incredibly helpful. And it's uh, very concrete. These are concrete ideas. And I like how you mentioned before, you know, if there's any addition ideas, uh, you know, feel free everyone to act on that. Uh, and one thing that I would even mention right here is for those who are watching this, this um, webinar, uh, just share it, you know, take it, take it, it only takes a couple of minutes, share it and uh, distribute it via email on your social media just get this information out there because there's other additional actors that can be acting on these suggestions. So that's uh, one thing that I would say is pretty easy to do. Um, so those are those are the end of my questions. And so now I'm gonna transition over to, uh, to our audience here. So if you have a question uh, for Stan, uh, feel free to type it into the chat and, uh, and we'll highlight your question and, uh, and we'll engage with it. And I guess uh, just to kick start that section off, uh, some of these ideas uh, that you gave here, um, there's probably a, a, a what's a good timeline here, you know, because we know that that uh, for those who are not familiar with, uh, you know, how bills pass through uh, both, the, you know, the Senate and everything. So what are we looking at for a timeline? What's the, when's the best time period in which to act? OK, well, that's, that's a great question. And I, I wish I knew that the, 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 this the very specific answer to that, but let me give you an overview in, in, in general uh, about it. Uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, 
bringing legislation forward is like the Greek myth of Sisyphus. And for to, to remind us about that, it's the person that used to roll the stone all up the mountain in the daytime. And at night, that roll, stone would roll back down the mountain and they'd have to go back down. And in the day, they'd roll it back up and this would go on forever and ever and ever. And this bill is a reflection of the Sisyphus kind of thing. So, uh, so, so you, know, you know, that being said, it's been it's now in second reading so the way that it works is in second reading different member uh, members of the senate will have an opportunity to speak to the bill against it or in favor of it with the general principles and then the bill will go into committee and then the committee will hear witnesses and receive briefs so another another uh, impact that people can have is to s submit briefs to the committee when the committee starts to sit it, it, it'll be um, you know, put posted on the Senate website, and Jimmy will let you know uh, when the committee uh, it's going to start hearings on this. Um, and then the committee can make amendments to the bill or it can make observations. And, and we're going to ask the committee to make two observations to the bill. And the reason we're using observations is because a bill from the Senate can't have costs associated with it. So we can't bring in something that says, we're putting this legislation forward, it's going to cost Canada a million dollars or $2 billion or something. We can't do that constitutionally, but we can amend observations so that the House can put those in, should they choose to do so. So one observation that we're going to put in is that the government of Canada could really help parents become better parents by supporting parenting programs and make them widely available, culturally specific, culturally appropriate, uh, parenting programs developed with and for different communities so that parents can util learn to utilize skills that will, will help them become better parents overall. Because we think that if we can improve parenting in our society, we're going to improve the outcomes of our children. So, so that's one observation that we're going to put in. And the other observation that we're going to put in is that the Government of Canada support more youth programs to 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 give youth opportunities to become better youth so we're going to suggest those to the to the committee as observations for the bill uh, because we know it needs to be in there but we can't put that in as a amendments because of it we hope we hope to be able to get this to committee early next year uh, and and when it, so uh, when it gets to committee i think that's the time that we're going to really, really need need uh, everybody putting in. But if you can start writing those letters and, and making those phone calls and having those meetings now, that will be really helpful because what it will do, it will sensitize the senators and it will sensitize the committee so that people will know how urgent and how important this is. So anytime between now and the end of November, if you can start putting that kind of uh, input in, uh, specifically to the Senate, but also to the House, getting them ready, but definitely to the Senate, members of the Senate. Uh, so now is the time to start raising this profile and making, making sure that all the members of the Senate realize how strong the support is for this across the country. So that's what we need at this point. Well, and that's perfect. I think that uh, it coincides very well with our 94 and 94 campaign. Uh, we are on uh, day 41 today, and uh, so we're going to go right up until December. So, um, yeah, so this is an opportunity, everyone. Um, as you send us more uh, links and information, you've talked about sending those updates. We're going to send that out to our mailing list. So for those watching, if you're not signed up for our mailing list, you can go to reconciliationthunder.org sign up for the mailing list also follow us on social media and we'll get that information out as well but uh yeah between now and november let's uh let's all work together to try to get uh you know some some action and uh to get some energy around this uh so it looks like i see a few comments here uh, i'm gonna just go through some of them are comments and some of them are questions um so i'm gonna start with this one here Hi, Andrea. I hope Senator Critcher comes on and announces that the bill has been pushed through. Always something to here. That, <laughs> that would make me so happy if that happened. <laughs> um, another comment from Danielle. Parenting without force is possible. In fact, without force is most effective. Okay. Uh, we have a comment. I, I'm yelling, from... uh, but, but, but speaking also from personal experience, parenting is not easy. 
parenting is really, really difficult. And the more resources that we can have for parents and, and the more support that we can have for parents, I think the better. Uh, but I just want to acknowledge to everyone that's listening to this, uh, the parenting is not an easy job. Uh, we all want to do a better job, but we also realize it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, comment from Andrea, our law contradicts itself. We all know force causes harm, social and emotional harm. Uh, encourage civil society. This is what our team is working on. We got this. We will support until repeal. Uh, Danielle again says, we need compassion remedy. Parents need support. Change is tough, especially parents struggling with trauma themselves. Compassion for kids means compassion for their parents. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. That's why we want to put that observation in so that parents can have that support. You know, for example, some of that support's actually already available, not as much as we want and as much as is needed, but some is already available in the Wellness Together portal. There's a, an organization called Strongest Families, which can give parental coaching to parents struggling with how to how to raise kids in, in, more effectively. Um, but a lot of Canadians don't even know about it, although the federal government is already supporting it. So, so you know, this is not a long stretch to uh, to 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 get the federal government to to do what it, I think it, it could do, and that's put into the, into place those supports and those resources that can uh, make us a kinder and more compassionate society. We have a comment from Elizabeth Perry. It's not benign for anyone based on neurological effects during brain development. That's also Elizabeth uh, Perry. The, that's a very prescient observation. There's some interesting new research on that, which shows that that, that children who are, are receive corporal punishment or, or are hit, uh, it changes the way their brains uh, respond to threat assessment, so that uh, it become they become more fearful. And when we're afraid, we have basically two options. One is to run away, and the other is to fight back. That's the fight or flight response. And so if, if their brains become desensitized or, or learn to, to, to identify uh, these threat reactions differently, they are actually more likely to fight back. It is the more likely to strike and hit out. So you're right. You're right that, that, that there is some emerging evidence. It's, it's just starting, but it's emerging evidence to actually support what you're talking about. Uh, here, this is a comment from user Dark Native. These conversations are imperative in reclaiming our culture and language and building on relations for tomorrow. But is there somewhere we can see a schedule so we know ahead of time of events? Um, well, that, that's a really important question. I wish we could do that, but, the, but the, the process, we don't know, but maybe your organization could help us out. We, we'll, we'll link with you and, and we'll let you know when the bill is, 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 is going into committee and when it's coming out for third reading, we'll let you know that. Awesome. Uh, comment from Danielle, this bill will save millions. I hope so. <laughs> it costs society a lot. Yeah. Uh, another comment from Danielle, parenting is political. Kids become citizens. They add costs. Uh, they add or cost us in the end. Yeah, we, we, you know, the, the more we can do to help parents be better parents, uh, the more we do to help optimize outcomes for kids. It's, it's a pretty simple equation. Uh, two comments here. Parenting is the hardest thing, equally challenging, rewarding and worth it. And then Will Piper followed up and said, yes, it's equally difficult and rewarding. I completely agree. I completely agree. Uh, and I, I wish I could tell you that I didn't make lots of mistakes as a parent, but I made all sorts of mistakes as a parent. And I'm just hopeful that my kids don't repeat the same mistakes that I made. And, and I can see watching them parent that they're better, way better parents than I was. And, and so uh, they've learned from their mother clearly. But uh, uh, it's it, it, this is this is, you know, we know the impact of intergenerational trauma. We haven't spent as much time looking at and understanding the, the intergenerational transmission of positive impacts. And I think through parenting is a good way to encourage intergenerational transmission of positive impacts. And that relates to this other comment. Uh, 
again from user Dark Native. It's taken generations to diminish our traditional parenting skills. It will take generations to bring them back. Yeah. And then Andrea, our push button world likes simplicity. A list of senators with emails and numbers would be helpful so we can reach out. Uh, question for you on this. You were saying that it's actually better to have, instead of like the form or the automatic reach out, it's better to do that personal connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, the, I would, I would um, hesitate to advise. In fact, I would ask not to send form emails. Um, in fact, emails, uh, because we get so many emails uh, every single day, it's hard for them to, to be given the attention they deserve. And, and I'll just be really blunt about this. Many of the emails we get, we don't know if they come from a person or from a bot. So it's very hard. But if we get a letter, not a form letter, don't send form letters, but if we get a personal heartfelt letter from an individual, that means an awful lot. Uh, and you don't have to pay money because postage to the Senate and postage to the House is free. So you just put, you know, the senator's name and then we'll make sure that you have a list uh, uh, of the senator's names. And then you just write Senate of Canada, Ottawa, Ontario, it'll get to us. Uh, and the postage is free. So it's pretty simple to do uh, a, a, a personal email uh, a, a, a focusing on this, asking that the bill be repealed and saying why you think it's important. So the comments, for example, that we've just seen, that's the kind of comment that should come in in, in a personal email. Uh, so it's free. It takes a few minutes to write the email, but it's so important to have that. Or not the email, the, the actual letter, but it's so important that, to have that. And if you can follow up with a call to the senator's office, uh, who you are and why it's important, uh, I think that would be, that would be uh, also something to think about. But the personal letter would be so important. A uh, question from Danielle. Can we post senator phone numbers and email addresses um, probably also mailing addresses on our Facebook page and group. Is that legal? Well, it's all in the public domain. You can post anything that's in the public domain. Yeah. 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 And, and the address is simple. Just write the senator's name, Senator Stanley Kutcher, Senator of Canada, Ottawa, Ontario. It'll get to us. <laughs> the post office knows where we are. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're, we're uh, coming near the end of our, our time here. Uh, if there are any other comments or questions here, there's another one. List of senators so we can send both personal email and personal call. It would help extend our reach. So I would really yeah. advise not to send emails, even personal emails, send a letter, per, send a personal letter and that makes a, that tells us that then we actually know who it is that's sending it. And you can tell us in your own words, don't send us form letters. Tell us in your own words why it's important to you, because we want to know these things. And, and, and there, there isn't a senator in the chamber who doesn't want to understand the story of a, of a Canadian. We all want to understand the stories of Canadians, but you have to tell us what those stories are. Hmm. So then, uh, so what we'll do is we, we can send out a list on our uh, social media channels and on our mailing list. And uh, but we won't include emails. We'll just include uh, cell uh, cell phone numbers uh, or or phone numbers, phone numbers. Yeah, we'll include phone numbers and and mailing addresses just to encourage, just to reiterate it and reinforce and encourage these letters. You know, um, personal letters. So um, that's something that we definitely can uh, send out. <laughs> Andrea, okay, well, well, handwritten good, uh, tears fine, but don't cut yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, okay, great. Uh, well, if there's any final questions, uh, feel free to write them in. Um, and I guess uh, a quick summary of, of what you were saying um, is uh, just yet yeah, contacting the senators, uh, phone calls or letters. You also talked about uh, another action is contacting educators and uh, just and the other uh, yeah, the other call, uh, other other action you said is getting young people to speak up, tell their stories, share their voices. And uh, and then last one, I believe you said was submit briefs. Um, and so I guess. Uh, yeah. And we have some people in the comments saying that they're committing to sending 
committing now to sending letters. Uh, fantastic. Thanks so much, uh, Janice. Really appreciate that. Uh, did you want to comment a little bit more about the briefs, submitting briefs? Sir, when, when the committee starts, and we'll let you know, Jimmy, when that happens, and you can let people know that uh, uh, briefs are welcome from any, any Canadian giving their opinion on what the committee is studying. So we'll let you know when the committee is sitting, and then people, you can actually tune in uh, on, on watch the proceedings of the committee. Uh, the committee will call witnesses, but the committee will also receive briefs. So uh, if Canadians have an opinion on a topic, uh, write it down. It's usually two or three pages, and then and then you send it to the committee uh, clerk of the committee. Uh, when the time comes, we'll 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 help you with those details, uh, and and then. Those briefs are, are, are translated into both official languages, and then they're made available to all the committee members and the analysts that study, uh, that, that support the committee, read all the briefs, and, and they're very important because they provide additional information to the committee. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, in summary, so uh, contacting senators, letters or phone calls, uh, connecting with educators, encouraging young people to use their voices, and uh, submitting briefs. And in addition to that, again, I just want to reiterate if any, if everyone can just take a moment to share this webinar, whether it's via email, whether it's on social media, please uh, get this information out there so additional people can uh, can share as well. Yeah. Jimmy, if I could just make one, one, one uh, additional nuance here. If young people would write letters so mm. saying that they don't support corporal punishment, of young people, them being young people themselves. They don't have to tell their own story because some may have received it, some may have not, but just overall that they don't think it's a good idea, uh, that would be really, really helpful. And okay. let them put their age in, on it. They don't have to say anything more about themselves, but if we hear from from like a couple of thousand young people who are aged 13 and 14, uh, no, no, uh, uh, nine to 14 or nine to 13, that's, that would be wonderful. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, okay. And yeah, once again, thank you to everyone. Please share the, uh, the feed. If you're, if you're not signed up for our 9494 campaign, you can sign up at reconciliationthunder.org. Also, you can follow our social media posts related to the campaign on the Circles for Reconciliation or Reconciliation Thunder social media pages. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, hearing more from you. And also, yeah, make some posts. If you're if you're sending letters, posts, tag our pages, use hashtags. Uh, we want to know about it. It'll generate that uh, encouragement and energy around that as well. So please feel free to do that. Uh, Stan, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate having you. And um, for anybody who is uh, available for, if you registered online, you would have got uh, a Zoom link. So you feel feel free to join us for a conversation afterwards. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your busy day today and, uh, and sharing this knowledge and information with all of us. Well, thank you very much, Jimmy, for having me. It's been a privilege uh, to be here with you. And I want to thank you and your, your group for all the incredible work that you're doing uh, on all of the, of the recommendations. And you correctly said it's not uh, so much now about reconciliation, it's about reconciliation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for everyone for joining. As I said, take the time to share the webinar and uh, everyone enjoy your day today. Thank you so much. Ciao.